Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're back again, I'm assuming you wanted to know what was going to happen in the trial. Because why would you be here otherwise? This is not the first episode. Anyway, uh, I was ready to hop back in and I figured if I, 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 I just want to get through this game. I want to play, I want to know. So without further ado, let's hop into this. Let's load in. Yes. Continue. Yes. Uh, let's just finish preparation. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. And the killer really is one of us, right? Of course! Okay then, everyone close your eyes, and whoever did it, raise your hand. Don't be a goddamn idiot. Why the hell would they raise their hand? Before we move on and start the trial, can I ask a question real quick? Hmm. What's going on with those pictures? I'd feel awful if they got left out just because they died. Friendship penetrates even death's barrier. Friendship penetrates? <laughs> okay, but... What about that other empty seat? There were only 15 of us to begin with, so why are there 16 seats? Oh, no reason! It's just that our little courtroom here can technically fit up to 16 people! Okay, that about does it for the preamble! Get ready to get started! First up is the case summary! Now, let the class trial begin! It's about to begin. The debate to decide who we think is the killer is. Anything I found, anything I noticed, I have to be ready to speak up about everything. Because this isn't just about me. Everyone everyone's lives are on the line. Your first non-stop debate is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. I need to know. As things progress during each class trial, you will engage in a number of non-stop debates. During these discussions, Characters will speak one another without pause. It is up to you to unearth any lies or contradictions buried within their statements. What this means is that you will have to use your truth bullet to refute what they say. Any relevant truth bullets you found during your investigation will be loaded into the truth cylinder. Use the mouse to aim, then fire with the left mouse button. Pay close attention to each character's statement and use your truth bullets to blast the right one. Note that if you run out of time, you will automatically fail, so please be careful. If you press the escape key during these arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. I assert that the one who was murdered was Miss Sayaka Maizono! Yeah, we know that part already. And the murder took place in Makoto's room. In the bathroom. So it seems most likely that the killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. She didn't even have a chance to resist. Something's off about what was just said. If Siaka hadn't resisted at all, there would be no explanation for what happened to my room. For this first debate, we'd like to take a quick sidebar. We are unable to spot and refute someone's lie or contradicts the argument will repeat. Within a group of statements, someone's word appear in a different color. Did you happen to notice? That represents a potential hole in a person's statement, a possible weak spot. These weak spots reveal important, though not always inaccurate, sections of the person's statement. Your truth bullet are only effective against these weak spots. So when we see one come up, take aim and fire, but only if you are sure it's actually wrong. Also, you can fast forward an argument by holding down the control key. Well then, good luck and have fun. 
I assert that the one who was murdered was Miss Sayaka Maizono. Yeah, we know that part already. And the murder took place in Makoto's room. In the bathroom. So it seems most likely that the killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. She didn't even have a chance to resist. No, that's wrong. Break. Just a second, Chihiro. Try to remember how my room looked. With the way things had been damaged, I think we can definitely assume there was a struggle. A struggle? Between who and who? Between Sayaka and the killer, of course. So you're saying Sayaka wasn't caught by surprise in the bathroom? She must have been attacked in the main room first. Then, she ran to the bathroom to try and hide. The killer followed her in, and that's where they finished the job. That much should have been obvious after taking one look at the scene. It shouldn't even need explaining. S sorry Okay, so what's next? Next is the subject of the murder weapon. Wow, this is starting to sound like a real trial. We need to determine what was used to kill Sayaka. So what was used to kill her? There was some kind of sharp object thrust into her stomach. Without a doubt, that is the murder weapon. So the killer used some random knife they had on him. How could anyone do something like that? That son of a bitch! Here's the object that was thrust into Yaku's stomach. It was most certainly the knife that disappeared from the central location. So what was used to kill her? There was some kind of sharp object thrust into her stomach. Without a doubt, that is the murder weapon! So the killer used some random knife they had- No, that's wrong! There we go. I gotta get the hang of this. No. I do think it was a knife, but not just any knife. I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Huh? A kitchen knife? After the murder, we discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. Which means that knife must be the murder weapon. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sort of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. And if you look real close, I could totally see that being a kitchen knife. Okay, so the murder weapon was a kitchen knife, but where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? That's right. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. Hold on a second. I'm... Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. Otherwise, what's the point of the trial? Well, we can talk all we want. It's not going to change that conclusion. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will reveal itself. You really believe that? She's right. There's got to be a breakthrough somewhere just waiting for us to find it because I know damn well I'm not the killer. There's a bit more to learn about an debate. Would you like to learn more? Absolutely! You can concentrate by holding the space key. While you're concentrating, time will slow down so you can pay closer attention to what everyone's saying. On top of that, it's... It'll steady your aim, making it easier to target potential weak spots. Concentrating like this consumes the focus gauge. And if this gauge empties, you can't concentrate. But the focus gauge will recover over time, so let your brain take a rest. No need to rush. Well then, good luck and have fun. So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. But where does that get us? Makoto must have taken it from the kitchen, right? He did it in secret. No, that's wrong! Haha, -ha, got it. Break. Okay, wait. Hold on. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. Next, you're gonna say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead and say it all you want. Well, what if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier? 
Well, I went to get some tea from the kitchen last night and all the knives were still there. But when I finished my tea and went back into the kitchen to wash my glass, one of the knives was gone. So you're saying the kitchen knife disappeared while you were drinking your tea in the dining hall? Yeah. Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Y yeah, that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Um... No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. The knife disappeared while Hina was in the dining hall. But I wasn't there the entire time. In other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. Okay, then what about this? What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together, and lying to protect each other? Idiot swimmer girl? Oh, and more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? But what if they did work together and they just didn't know about the rule? Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case! Oops! Did I say that out loud? Anyway, I didn't go to the dining hall. And I didn't take the knife. So I'm not the killer. Okay, so then... Who did take the knife? Hina seems the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. No, no way! I swear it wasn't me! Sure, but can you or anyone else prove that? I can. Damn. That's right. Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea. Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's... Me. Right. But then, couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? Actually, no. Because, um, well... Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. Which means, we have airtight alibis. You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms, but it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room, so I don't think that's a problem. It is a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's... it's... unwholesome! But... I'm a girl. You are? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! Oh my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh. This man. I personally love me a buff lady. But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? Oh, yeah, that's true. One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, because... they're not here anymore. Sayaka. She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. Sayaka? Okay, so the person who took the knife from the kitchen was... Sayaka. I got it! Then, Sayaka is the one who took the knife? That's the only possibility. And thinking back on it, she was acting kind of unusual. <sighs> when she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water. But most likely, 
when the person who took the knife was the victim herself. I'm sure... I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her and she was killed with it? In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. What? See? He did do it after all! No, you're wrong! So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Mm hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. Damn, if I don't do something, they're gonna blame me for the murder. They don't understand. If they convict me, everyone's gonna Hold die. On. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer, wouldn't you say? Because you see, if the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. And until we unravel that little mystery, you simply can't declare that he's the killer. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Your first hangman's gavit is about to be in. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely! As things advance further in the class trial, the hangman's gambit will eventually take place. The point of this is to reveal important phase, phrase related to the incident in question. We'll have to deduce the phrase from the letters flying around, and the letters are already known. Complete the phrase by shooting down the flying letters in the right order. Use the mouse to aim and press the mouse button to shoot the desired letters. If you shoot down the wrong letters, you'll suffer damage uh, to influence to your influence gauge. This gauge reaches zero, or if you run out of time, you fail. Well then, good luck and have fun. Something that should have been at the scene, but wasn't, must be the crucial point. All right, let's take a sec. Did we notice anything missing? Roller hair. What that something is? Dirt. Hair. Hangman's gavit. Hair. H. Hair. Now I understand. That's right! There wasn't a single hair on the floor! So... the culprit removed some evidence? Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room! The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, not just her hair. <laughs> yes, very true, very true! Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course, to remove any trace that they had ever been there. Wait, then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. Then she's Makoto on my side. Isn't the culprit? She is on my side. Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. I would like to hear these reasons. Do you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah. Then they ran after her got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? The door was damaged. The killers struggled getting into the bathroom, and the evidence proves it. The object the killer broke... Q. 
here. I got it! Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. You're talking about the doorknob, right? Huh? The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely broken. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? Oh, yeah, true. But what does it mean? In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Okay, then. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. Kyoko said it was bewildering act. It almost didn't notice it at first. But is that the key point here? There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. We're going to learn. From here on out, the number of weak spots will start going up. But no matter how many weak spots, there, there's essentially one light or contradiction in that debate. What I'm trying to say is that all, not all weak spots you see are necessarily false. Use the truth bullet on the wrong one, and you will not only will fail to refute what they said, but you will also lower your trust with everyone and your influence gauge will damage. Now, this is important because if your influence gauge reaches zero, you fail. You'll have to rely on your own logic and determine weak spots actually lies or contradicts. Well, then, good luck. Have fun. Arguably. The incident took place in Makoto's room. Sayaka was first attacked in the main room. She then fled into the bathroom. Then the killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. Because Sayaka had locked it. No, that's wrong. Yes. The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all, the girls' rooms are the only ones with locking bathrooms, right? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yep. True as true can be. But you know, you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... <laughs> that's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. The killer was convinced the bathroom door was locked, so they didn't know that the door actually couldn't be locked. In other words, the important detail about the scene, the crime they wouldn't know was... The crime took place in his room. I got it! The killer must not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable. And yet, he's absolutely right. Say what? Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms, which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But the killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? That is a definite possibility. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Then Makoto couldn't have done it. 
That's what I've been trying to tell you. Okay, then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up! Quit without saving! But... what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Majority rules? You really think that's a good idea? Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, you... You don't gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um... Well... I was just wondering... How did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Hmm, yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... Maybe someone picked the lock? Ugh. Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. No, that can't be it either. Oh, -ho! trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it? Because she asked me to do something in particular because of how frightened she was. And the answer, that's the answer right there. Now there's no way to say I could let in someone because... I wanted to see what I had to work with. Uh, switching rooms, I'm, I'm, I guess. I got it! Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. The same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. Even... If I'm sure it's you, I absolutely will not open. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Let me turn it off auto for a second. Not auto on because, well, I didn't want it to... I wanted it to continue without it, me having to hit the button. But this bitch <laughs> obviously let someone in. You know? So, we, we gotta figure out why she let somebody in. And honestly, I'm starting to get a little bit like... Judge, like I'm doubting myself but I know that I'm probably right and that's the thing it, I have to be right knowing what she'd been through I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone what if her being scared was a lie huh well, what the hell is that supposed to mean why would she lie about something like that I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me, can you still deny the possibility? Ooh. There's something I want to talk to you about. It's just the two of us. Five minutes. Come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? Damn. I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appeared. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. Yep. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. Yeah. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique. But even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. She sounds like Marceline the Vampire Queen, and I don't know if it's just me. But that's just how her voice sounds to me. Oh, and I should also mention, 
I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Huh? Which means only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then yeah. either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. Damn. So, Makoto, did you write this? N no, I didn't. But of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. In that note, Sayaka wrote it. But, but why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. Damn. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. Pin it on poor. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation. What young man could resist? Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. But yeah. can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Well, Very yes. well then, pay attention. Thorn plate. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. Hmm. It certainly would seem that way. Come on, man. The killer went to my room instead of Sayaka's, and the reason is that... Had to be because what got switched between me and Sayaka. Can you? Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says my room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. No, it's wrong. Haha, <laughs> I got it that time. I knew what I wanted to hit. It just took a sec. It's hard. The nameplates on Mai and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. Mm. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right? Okay, then who did it? The only person who could have switched the nameplates. There's only one person who switched it. The only person who knew we had switched the rooms was Sayaka. I got it! Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. There's something I want to talk to you about. Just us two. Five minutes. Come see me in my room. Check the name place to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. Why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. 
What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? Dependent on someone. To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. Yeah. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. We figured it out. We know who did it. Whoever she invited over is the culprit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, remember to hit like and subscribe. The class trial is going to be very long, so this is going to have to be split into multiple parts. Uh, so if you're here, that means you enjoyed the first part, which means you should be liking. And then to get notified, we got to subscribe for it to pop in. Like, hey, this person you're subscribed to posted the next video for this game you're watching. So you're going to want to make sure you do that. Hope you all had a great day. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.